God is great, and so are you, YouTube. Stick around. Hey, hey, YouTube. Welcome back to Urban Outdoors. Hey, I'm Urban, but you knew that, didn't you? Where have you guys been? No, I just want to pop on and give you guys a quick update on my last cancer procedure. Let you know how that went. Let you know how I'm doing. Give you some plans that I have for upcoming videos. First of all, I'm smoking this pipe that I need your help with. This is the first time I've smoked this pipe. It was one that was in my father's collection. I still need to clean it up a little bit more. I finally got the stem as good as I can get it. When I got it from my son, it was oxidized so much that it was actually brown. Comes to find out it is a black stem. Now I need to work on the bowl a little bit. And inside the bowl, I have some of my blend that I call Frodo's Weed. It's an excellent smoking pipe. It's a very odd, unique shape. The only markings that I have on it, and there's no way you'd be able to pick it up on the camera, I had to actually put on my reading glasses and use my magnifying glass to pick up on the stem right here. And like I say, I know you're not going to be able to see it. But it looks like an S with four little, possibly stars or circles above it. So I'm sure that's a maker's mark. I don't know if that's the maker's mark for, I'm trying to think of S pipes. Savinelli, Stanwell, I don't know. And then on the other side, again, you're not going to be able to make it out. But it says, uh, hand cut. And then on the bottom side, again, you can barely make it out, is a number stamp, 21. So if any of you guys recognize this pipe or that logo or anything about it, I'd love to hear about it. All I know is it was my father's. And like I say, it's a great smoking pipe. Very unique looking. So, this past Friday, I went all the way down to MUSC. We woke up at 5 o'clock here in the morning because they told me I needed to be there at 8. And the procedure was supposed to start at 11. Why I have to be there at 8 when the procedure doesn't start until 11? I don't know. But you know how doctor's offices are. But I was going to have beads of radiation implanted. Going up, you can see where they've gone up twice now. I don't know if you can see those two little, two little marks on my hand there. Right here. It's not coming through clear, I'm sure. But anyway, they go up through my wrist, down through my aorta, into my liver and inject tiny, tiny, almost microscopic beads of radiation to hopefully kill that cancer. So I wake up at five, get dressed. My wife and I, we drive to Charleston that early in the morning. We get there on time. They take me back. They do all the prep work. I put on the gown and the stupid little socks. They put the IV in my arm. They do my vitals. They do some blood tests. And then at 11 o'clock, I'm supposed to go back. The anesthesiologist comes in and tells me what they're gonna do. Then the doctor comes in and tells me what he's gonna do. But get, get this, you're not gonna believe this story. Alright, 
I've done what I'm supposed to do. I'm there on time. A little bit early, actually. It's time for them to take me back. I'm still not back. 11 o'clock. Okay. Maybe they're running a little bit behind. I don't know how that can be, but maybe they are. Well, at about 11.15, Dr. Yamada rolls in. Well, we've got a development. Uh, it appears that your radiation has not arrived yet. What do you say to that? I'm like, well, what do you mean? Well, the radiation uh, beads have not arrived. Because of the weather, blah, 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 they've been delayed. All right, well, what does that mean? Now, here's what the doc tells me. He tells me that every second that goes by, the potency of that radiation decreases. Well, okay, when will the radiation be here? I don't know. Can you not track it? Oh, well, we did that last night, and the package was in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and all I know is that the radiation is supposed to go into my liver that I'm here for. The only reason I'm here was at some point last night in Memphis, Tennessee. I was livid. My wife was livid. And I said, look, every FedEx driver, yeah, oh yeah, that's another thing. It's being shipped via FedEx, guys. Radiation is being shipped from Canada to Charleston via FedEx. I wonder if the FedEx guy even knows he's carrying radiation. Obviously, it is a time-sensitive package due to the decrease in effectiveness over time. So, anyway, I told the doc, I said, look, every FedEx driver has a phone. You know the tracking number. FedEx knows the tracking number. Call FedEx. Have them put in the tracking number. Find out who the carrier is. Call the carrier. Find out where is the radiation. I went on to say, rather angrily, I know that's going to take somebody actually picking up a phone and doing some phone calls. You know, work. But that's what we need to do then that's what we need to do. Do it. Well, they put me on hold, went back and forth, this, that, this, that, and the other. My wife is upset. She's crying. I'm freaking out. She's freaking out. My wife calls the hospital administrator. Some high-level nurse comes in, makes excuses, which for basically there are none and promises she'll try to track it and find out what's going on. Well, more time passes by. Now it's about 12.30. I still don't know if I'm going to have this procedure or not. The doctor comes in and says, well, you need to make a decision. Do you want to wait for the radiation, or do you want to reschedule it? Well, I'm like, well, do we know yet when it's going to be here? No, we have no clue if it's going to be here. Well... You told me that the longer I wait, the less potent it is, the less effective it'll be. I don't want you putting ineffective radiology, radiation, into my liver. Well, we do have a certain window. All right, how big is that window? How long can we wait until it's effective? He tells me, well, as long as we get it by around 2 o'clock, and we can do the procedure at 2 o'clock, you should be okay. That's not good enough. I want to talk to somebody else. So, my wife gets on the phone again with MUSC. Even though we're sitting inside of MUSC, she has to go through this circle of loops on phones. You know how it is. And then, supposedly, the director of radiology comes in. This guy looks like Ross Geller from Friends and starts to make excuses. 
he actually took the whiteboard that was on the wall and tried to explain to me the logistics pattern for FedEx and how it's beyond their control. And I said, I'll tell you what I told the other doctor. Every FedEx driver has a phone. Every package has a tracking number. FedEx knows the tracking number. FedEx can therefore find out the carrier. They can call that carrier, ask a simple question. He can give a simple answer and we'll know. Well, at the same time this doctor's talking to me, Dr. Cooper, who is Dr. Yamato's boss over radiation oncology, comes in. He's out of breath, sweating. He obviously ran to get there. And he apologizes profusely while the other guy's going through his whiteboard of numbers. I'm like, look, you just stop, okay? What do you have to say? I found out it's in Charleston. Oh, good. It's about 1230. We should be able to get this done then. Yeah, but we don't know when it's going to get here. We don't know where in Charleston it is. Wow. So I talked to Dr. Cooper, and I told him what Dr. Yamada had told me, who has now left. He's He disappeared. And he tried to better explain to me this window of opportunity that we have. And he told me that Dr. Yamada must have been mistaken. The window is bigger than that. And then he goes into the computer and puts in the grams that he recommended of radiation and allowed for deletion up to six o'clock. He said, all right, if we would have done this at 11 o'clock, 133 grams of radiation would have been implanted. If we can't do it until six o'clock, it would only drop to 124, which should still be plenty effective to do what we want to do. Hopefully it won't be as late as six o'clock. So if it's sooner, more than 124. Well, I felt a little bit better. More time goes by. I'm sitting there, sitting there. The director guy comes back in and says, all right, we've got a, an OR prepped, ready. We got a team on standby just for you. So as soon as we get that radiation, we'll be able to get you back there and get started. All right, I feel a little bit better, but still no radiation. Well... It's now about 1.15. They say, yes, the radiation just arrived here at the hospital. We have it. We'll be able to get you back in the room and get you started in about 30 minutes. Finally, yes. And it's going to be, that's going to put us around 2 o'clock. So the effectiveness should still be very good. Well, 30 minutes goes by. An hour goes by, an hour and a half goes by, two hours go by, two and a half hours go by. Yeah, two and a half hours later, about 2.45, I finally get the anesthesiologist, come, the anesthesiologist comes in to roll me back. He says, all right, we're going to get started in about three minutes. I said, don't say that. But anyway... He rolls me out, takes me back there, gets me set up, puts the injection in my arm. Next thing I know, it's over. I woke up in a different room, groggy, what's going on, what's going on, very sore, starving. The procedure took two hours, so we're almost five o'clock, and I haven't eaten since midnight before. I'm drugged up not feeling good, and um, it was just a miserable, miserable experience. And when I came back to the room, I had to sit there for another two hours because they had this pressurized inflatable band around my incision here. And they had to come every 15 minutes and let a little bit of air out. 
until two hours went by and it was completely deflated. Then they took that off to make sure that it wasn't still bleeding. And thank God it wasn't. Long story short, it's about 7 o'clock now in the, in, the, in the p.m. We got there at 8 o'clock in the a.m. So almost a full 12 hours we're able to leave. But my wife didn't feel comfortable driving at night. So we had to stay. We had to find a hotel and stay the night. So we had the added expense of staying a night in Charleston. I was starving, but I didn't feel like eating. They gave me five medications, which I have been on since then. So until today, I haven't felt like doing a thing. But when I looked outside and I saw the glorious day that God has chosen for me to feel better, I'm like, I got to get out. So I got out and I walked up and down her dirt road a couple times because I have felt so weak, so nauseous, so constipated, so blah, so drugged out. I still have a few more days of prednisone and antibiotics, but I'm so looking forward to getting back to a normal life. Anyway, that's where I've been. I know where you guys have been because I've been watching your videos. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank every one of you for the prayers, for the emails, the Facebook messages, even the mail of gifts. Someone I don't even know is a pastor at a church, and I'm not going to mention names because I don't know if he would want me to. He only knows me from YouTube. His church generously sent us a check for $200. Now, how he knew to do that amount of money, well, I don't think he did. God knew. But the medication was $85. The hotel room was $85. The gas to get there and back was about $35. So we're at about $200. What a blessing. The people in this YouTube prepper community, outdoor community, pipe community are so great. And I can't say thank you enough. That gift alone I can't repay that, and I know they don't expect me to, but that's just a, a sign to me that God, God provides. He puts people in your life for a reason, and uh, I'm so thankful. Today I'm feeling good enough where I'm going to be able to write a nice thank you note and get it in the mail. You know who you are. But on top of that, comments with prayer with prayers and kind words and the Facebooks and the emails I can't say thanks enough I uh, I really do appreciate all of you greatly for supporting my channel anyway I said this was going to be short and it's turned out to be long so I will let you guys go I'm going to walk a little bit more build my strength back up look forward to making some more videos for y'all and I hope y'all are looking forward to watching them. So anyway, till next time, guys. Keep calm, carry on, keep puffing, and keep it outdoors.